15. Fishing the DMV has big plans for the future, but to get there, I need your help. In order to keep Fishing the DMV alive through 2024 and beyond, we need 100 Patreon subscribers. We are only 15 Patreon subscribers away from achieving this goal. For $6 a month, which is less than a pack of Cinco's or a Jackhammer Chatterbait, you can help keep Fishing the DMV alive. All Patreon supporters will receive 5% off all of their orders to Jake's Bait and Tackle each and every month. You will also get 10% off Tiger Crankbaits, our newest sponsor who won best in show at the Richmond Expo. You'll also be a part of our private Facebook group community, weekly prize giveaways, and so much more. If you would like to support our show, check out our Patreon link down below. Thank you so much. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Fishing the DMV. I'm your host, Thomas Aarons, and we are here in the doldrums of February. Um, this is by far, I think, the worst month of the year for us. Because to me, what makes this worse is people are fishing down south and we can't. You know, in December and January, for the most part, no one's fishing. So I feel a little bit better because misery loves company. Now we're getting to the point where they're starting out at Okeechobee in Texas and we can't do anything yet, but we're getting to that time here. And so someone I've really, something I've really wanted to talk about more this year, because each year I try to add more topics, is the electric boat tournament and, and that, whole, that whole scene. Uh, and who better to have on than uh, Russ Hamilton. Russ, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So how did you get into this whole crazy thing of fishing? You know, um, my dad raised me hunting and fishing since I was about four years old and I, it just took off from there, man. I mean, um, I met some friends later when I was like in my late twenties, early thirties and I fished BFLs, traveled all over, had a great time, fished some back then it was strength series. Um, then fish some FLW stuff. And as my kids got older, got into sports and everything, kind of like put it on the back burner. I still fished, still hunted, obviously. But, um, you know, you don't want to be the dad that misses the first home run or the, uh, the first, you know, no hitter being pitched or something like that. Um, so, you know, I, t- I took a little, I took a little break from the tournament series and then, um, heard about the uh the trolling motor only electric you know clubs started fishing a few of those i met eric weimer him and i are like brothers now um and last year we started a uh our own you know tournament trail the virginia high voltage and how did that become a thing? Like, I mean, going from strand traveling around the country, did, did you sell like all of your boats and everything? And then you're like, I want to get back into it. Like, how do you make that transition to electric? Yeah, I, I had a big boat and fished Potomac a lot and, you know, Smith Mountain Lake and, you know, traveled mm-hmm. all over and did, you know, I mean, it was fun. I do miss it. Um, I, I actually down at the show in Richmond, I ran into some, some friends, um, Josh Waggy, him and I traveled together for probably about seven or eight years and his dad and um it was good to see them but uh you know there's a time in your life when you're like all right i'm ready to throw in the towel take a break and put my family first for a little while you know and the electric only tournaments i don't have to leave for a week i don't have to go practice for a week and and you know rent a house and all that crap and it's just easier and it's still fun and you can still win a lot of money. You scratch the itch. That's the biggest thing. Absolutely. And then, so you, you get into this scene and, and then what, honestly, as a guy that doesn't know much about it, I try to like peruse through social media. It, is there a big electric motor only tournament scene in Virginia? Yeah. I mean, there, there are, I mean, there's, um, you know, more, more down South towards like, uh, the Hampton area and stuff like that. They have so many more places to fish. And then they have like a national championship where they're fishing for like, damn, I think, I think it's like the two torpedo motors and that's like 10 grand or something or more. Maybe, um, uh, 
ten thousand dollars. I'm gonna I'm just gonna throw it out there like ten grand. It's a lot of money you, that they can win. You know, I didn't even job. know that. Yeah, I didn't know that. Damn, I didn't know that was a thing. And I mean, if wow. you think about it, like when Eric and I started Virginia High Voltage, we charged a hundred dollars a boat. It was a hundred dollars a tournament. And we had so many people say, oh, you'll never have more than four or five boats. So I think the most we had was 17 or 18 boats in one of our tournaments. So you pay one spot for every five boats. I mean, there were several guys that won between $800 and $1,000. And if they won big fish, then it's, you know, they won maybe 12 or 1300 bucks. Hmm. So that out of a you know a John boat, <laughs> that's 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 pretty good. That's a pretty good paycheck for for a weekend. And then fast forward to now, like how many boats do you generally have in, in a, an event on average? Uh, we are averaging ten to twelve boats. That's not bad, you know. And I mean, you know, that's why I wanted to come on and, and talk to you and and kind of like basically explain to everyone why Eric and I, I mean, there was, you know, we, 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 we took, uh, an entry, basically, I think it was $50, $40 or $50. I can't remember what it was to join the club. And then we took $20 for the big pot of the year. And then we took, uh, $20 for big bag of the year. And you didn't have to do it if you didn't want to. And this is just making it, to where our classic, you could win more money, mm-hmm. and you know, you, and don't get me wrong, I, I'm, I'm I'm not mad at them. I mean, there's guys that don't want to spend that much money, and they're there just to go have a good time. And if they want a couple hundred bucks, great. But we were trying to get the guys that are like, okay, it's only a hundred bucks. They spend that probably during the week on coffee and and McDonald's. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying, and they have a chance to win a good amount of money. And then all that money that we kept, we put that towards the classic and that just put, I want to say that put, um, an extra $1,200. I want to say it was, I don't have my, I'm in my, I just left the gym. I'm, yeah. I don't have my notes in front of me, but, um, it was like another thousand or $1,200 wow. on top of all the guys that actually fished the, the two day classic. So we had like, I'm going to throw it out. We had like $2,500 or $2,800 um, to pull from for for first place. And then like second place, I want to say second place was almost like 700 bucks, 750 bucks. That's a pretty good payout. And for, for, you know, like these aren't like the BFLs, the Toyotas, the Bassmaster Open style fields. And I guess a question that comes to mind is perfect world. How many boats would you want in an event? Because you're not fishing like Gunnersville, generally speaking. These are, these are certain type of lakes. So what would you like to see? Right. I mean, like, and when I, when I tell you about the new trail, there'll be some that, you know, we could probably have 20 boats, you know, but, um, and I, I think we could get there And this new, this new trail that we're, we're starting, um, we're not going to have a bunch of crybabies. We're not going to have, well, why don't we do this? Or why don't we do that? Or, you know, basically we changed it because we don't want the drama for one. Um, and you'll learn that I don't really sugarcoat much. We're t- tired of the drama. We're tired of the, the complaining. We're tired of the, you know, the entry fee. And my thing was, was if you don't pay a hundred dollars to fish you and your partner, then don't fish. Simple as that. You know, and people just kept dwelling on it and dwelling on it. And, you know, then, you know, my wife was nice enough. She she's been uh, in banking for 25 years and she's got employees to work for. Her and she's very, very busy. We have two French Bulldogs. My son's in travel baseball. My son plays high school ball. And if I think when I came home from a tournament, put in the results, if it weren't in by Monday, people are like texting and saying, or the results, you know, and it's just like, come on, guys, give give us a, a couple of days, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, I'm a nice, I try to be a nice guy, and we try to get everything, you know, 
ran right and we thought that we were doing it right but we were just tired of the of all the complaining and and basically just crybaby stuff really so with all that being said the new tournament trail is called virginia team trail and you can go onto that page and you can join the page and we dropped it to a $60 entry fee. We're thinking, okay, well that may, that might make us get more, more guys involved and they will complain about the hundred dollar fee. There's no club dues. We're not doing big bag and big fish of the year. Um, it's a hundred percent payout. There's no size limit. There, there are some, and I'm not poking fingers at anyone. They can run their their deals like they want. There's no size limit on your your electronic uh, your electric setup. If you come out there and you have three Tokitos or on the back of your boat, and you have a 101 up front, and you can run that boat back 27 miles an hour, you're more than welcome. You know, um, the uh, for the you know some some of the clubs don't allow forward facing sonars have you heard that which ones particularly are you talking about just in general across the united states or no i'm saying around around this way ones that you and i could jump in a boat and go fish together um hmm. they, there's there's one club because i was going to fish one of the tournaments on pelham and they said no forward facing sonar after they come off the bank i'm in the middle of the lake you know from june until november so i i want that's that, that's part of my that's part of my arsenal you know what i mean and probably about 95 percent of other guys so forward facing sonar you're fine i don't care if you have 12 10 inch you know units on your boat you're more than welcome um another thing you know a lot of people say well can you fish the day before a tournament we we, we can't we can't gun that man that you know what i'm saying i'm not gonna mm -hmm. come to a lake and sit there for two hours and say did somebody fish before this tournament if you want to fish up until 11 59 the night before a tournament you're more than welcome to we don't care we want to do it as simple and as easy as we possibly can and just have a good turnout and basically have fun and if somebody wins a few hundred dollars hey good for them so we're going to have six tournaments. Um, the tournaments are, are posted on that page, but I'll go over them real, real quick with you if you'd like. Absolutely. Um, we're going to do the Aquaquan River, uh, the one there by the, the ramp near 123 Bridge. Then we're going to do um, Dash Hound Reservoir down south. Dash? Is it called Dash Hound? It's uh that's the way it, I've, I've always called it dash out. I mean, um, and there's spots in there. Dash. There's spotted bass in there. That's that's one of their, you know, there's not many, you know, reservoirs in Virginia. And technically, they're not a spot like from Alabama, but it's a spotted bass. And it's a really, really fun place to fish. All right, hold on. I got to bring this and, up because I just learned something new. I didn't even know this damn place existed until now. Uh, Here we go. Guys, I'm sharing my screen it's, here. It's so actually you guys like Dyson. Yeah, D I A S C U N D. That's correct. And look wow. how big what? it is. Oh my god. Yeah. Dude, this place is huge. How many acres is this thing? My god. I want to say it's 1100. Holy shit. So, uh Shannon Christian, he he runs a club right now for the winter, 5 in the box. Um he had a pop-up tournament right there last year in it was late November, and I had wow. 17 pounds and didn't catch a check. That's insane. 1,100 there was acres. Five, there was five, uh, four or five guys had over 20 pounds. And I want to say Christian won that one with like 22 or 23 pounds. And it rained all day. Dude, that's freaking... That's... Uh, how much... Are a lot of these smaller lakes, and I'll even put the res in there, even though you can use a tin horse. It's basically electric motor on lake, pretty much. How many of these small reservoirs really can pull out bags? Because the res is famous for 
it's quality. This place, I just realized that it exists. Like, it looks like it pumps out quality. Absolutely. I mean, basically, all the, all the places that we we fish, you know, and we try to we try to schedule them to where twenty pounds could could should win on basically all of these tournaments. I would say the first time in October, it would probably take eight high seventeens, eighteen to win. Um, but I mean, uh, Akaquan, Dyson, and then we're doing Honey Run. Honey Run has huge bass in it. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I, that's going to, that one's, gonna, and we don't have the dates yet because, you know, we're waiting on some of the other schedules to come out. We don't want to step on their toes and we want to be as cool as we can. So that's, that probably is going to be right around the spawn and nice. it could take 25 to win that tournament i don't know so I'm, there's giants in in hunting run like oh yeah you know um and then we're going to go to quiet creek at willow landing so back to quiet creek yes sir so the first one will be up up river in aquan and then you're going to have two tournaments in between and then um, a quiet creek at Willow Landing. Uh, last year, I think it took, I think Jason had 18 pounds. Um, there was 18 to win that one. And like, I want to say 16 to cash a check, I want to say. Damn. Um, and then we're going to go to Shenandoah, Egypt, Egypt Bend, because hmm. it's bigger and we can, you know, have more boats hopefully. Um, and then the two day or will be in June and, uh, that's going to be on Lake Pelham out in Culpeper. Well, okay. What is that place like? Are there actually fish in that place? Cause I've driven past it and it looks like some kind of like golf course pond. That <laughs> the biggest bag I want to say before we, before we started, we just had pop-ups like a few years back. The biggest bag in one of our two tournaments, the Lake Pelham was uh, just shot out of 25. Jesus. <laughs> I yes. did not think and, that. Oh and that God. was in July. I want to say that was in July. D- is there weird rules with that place? Like, like, do you have to be like, be like, do you have to live there? Is like, cause no. it's just such a, really? Okay. You, you, um, you have to go and, and I will, I'll have Eric posted on our, on the page. You either have to go to town and get a town sticker for your boat, and it's you get it. It's like eighteen dollars, and it's good for two years. Or the country store where we put in there at twenty nine, the country store they have the sticker also. Um, a lot of times they're like, "Oh, we don't know where they are, or whatever." But <clears throat> normally they keep them back in the office, and you can just pay for your sticker there, stick it on your boat, oh, and okay. you're good to go. Hmm. I didn't, dude. That's so cool. I didn't even know that. Yeah, because like, but it's um. It, it's a it's a really fun place to fish. There's there's giants in there, and then it's so cool that you could almost have a Frederick ish Call Pepper centric place because you got Mooney Nye Hunting Run Call Pepper the Lake and Call Pepper. Like there's a lot of lakes right there that people don't really know about if you if you didn't have a boat that could go exactly. On. And and the, the you know we we'll probably have a pop up tournament. And if we do have pop up these 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 tournaments here, I just spoke on. These are going to be just the Virginia team trail. That's where it's going to be posted. And Eric and I talked, and if people start chattering and say, hey, well, there's not a tournament this weekend, let's have a pop-up. We're going to put that on the high-voltage page. So the high-voltage uh, tournament trail is gone, but we will have some pop-up tournaments. And Eric and I said, hey, look, we could give them a week notice. Hey, there's no tournaments next weekend that we know of. We're going to have a pop-up tournament at, you know, we're, we're at Mooney, let's say. And last year we had a good turnout. I, um, we had a benefit tournament because one of the, uh, one of our really good brothers that fishes with us, his uncle, um, a tree fell on him and he was injured really, really bad. Oh God. And we raised, I want to say we raised like five or $600 for him. That's awesome. You know, and, um, Anything's good, right? Yeah. And uh, two 
two teenagers actually won that tournament. I want to say they won with like, and it was a, it was a pretty tough tough day fish in bluebird skies, no wind, and um, I want to say sixteen won that tournament. So, uh, what? Yeah, it's just like this is so cool to me. Like this whole underbelly that I didn't even know about in the industry. Um, I, I I've started to learn more about the kayaking part of the world, but like the electric motor only thing is like is is new to me. But you know, even just having a map up here, like I'm down near the Richmond area, the Newport area. Like there are so many damn lakes that are of that that size, that hunting run kind of size or bigger. I mean, like there's Little Creek is right next to the one you're going to. Like I didn't even know that was a place. And um. Melissa and her husband, they, they run a, a club down there and they fish all of those bodies of water. Um, Dyson, Little Creek, they, um, I want to, is there a Swift Creek maybe? Yeah. It's, but it, you know, the only thing is, the only reason we're trying one is it's because it's like two and a half hours away, mm-hmm. but you can have the best day of your life on, on one of those bodies of water because they are full of freaking giants. I mean, and normally guys are like, well, I've never fished there. That's the fun and part. Anyone will tell you, you can go down the bank there with throwing a Cinco all day and catch 15 pounds pretty easy. So off topic of the tournament trail, out of all these electric motor only lakes, which one do you enjoy the most? And it doesn't have to be one that's on your schedule. It could be anywhere in Virginia. Um, I mean, I grew up fishing the river. Um, I won one tournament last year and I won the one on the Potomac. Oh, wow. um, but man, that's, that's a, that's a tough one, brother. Um, it's gotta be a small body of water. Can't be Lake Ann or something like that. What are these, these little bodies of water that you've just had fun learning? I, I love Pelham. Really? I do. I really do. Does it fish I, big? Does it fish small? Um, to the guys that know it, it fishes pretty small. Okay. But you know, you got you got your guys that, that fish areas where they should start getting their mail sent there to them. If you follow what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the ones that watch your podcast are going to know who I'm talking about, and that's that's me, that's Eric, that's Adam, that's all of us, you know. But um, I mean everybody's pretty cool if somebody's fishing the area and they move off one guy will come up and be like are you done here we're gonna let it rest for 20 minutes and come back okay cool no problem you know and and that's that's how we want our clubs to be you know we just want to go out there and have fun and all get along and leave all the crybaby stuff at home how big for people that aren't familiar with pelham is it like the size of like manassas is it the size of the res like how big is it like frederick um it's probably the size of Lake Frederick. Okay. It it so, it doesn't well it doesn't split like that, but you got a lot of guts. There's a lot of a lot of areas that are that get really really shallow, but some of those guys like to fish, you know, that much water. And don't get me wrong, you could catch them in that much water at Pelham, just depending on hmm. the time of the year. But there's um, there's ten pounders in there. That's insane. And he, and like like Mountain Run, Mountain Run is right around the corner from uh, from Pelham. We'll probably have a we'll probably have a a pop up tournament at Mountain Run. Um, it's much smaller, but um, Spencer Humphrey he went out the day after we had a tournament last year that was really really bad. And you know you're just waiting on those gr- big girls to move up. By himself, in one hour, he had 27 pounds in Mountain Run Lake. Dear God. And uh, this map doesn't do it justice. Is this like five acres? Like, how big is this damn thing? No, is that, that's Mountain Run? Yeah. That's like, I think it's like 110. All right, that's about the size of Sleater's Lake then. In, uh, exactly. Hill. That's crazy. Dude, that's, it's, that's right there. That is so cool because everyone complains about all these big places and you don't realize like there are so many of these other little places to fish. Um, and I mean, you can see where Pelham is compared to uh, Mount Run. They're, they're, yeah, they're uh, sisters. You could pull your boat out and be there in five hmm. minutes. I have a, th- I've always wanted to talk to this. is You're the perfect person to talk about this. I always had a theory that 
in a perfect world, it's better to have a bunch of lakes the size of Mooney and Hunting Run versus one lake because it does disperse the pressure. Absolutely. Like, do you think that's actually there's some validity to that? Absolutely. I mean, I, and that's why, you know, we, we try not to, you know, I, I think Pelham, a few years back, Eric and I were talking, we were having so many damn tournaments at Pelham, at Pelham, at Pelham, you know, and we're like, dude, we got to, we kind of got to move out. We got to go to the river. We got to go to these other places and just give this, this place a break. You know, I mean, there's, I want to say the other guys that, that run clubs, there might be three tournaments this year on those other clubs that go to Pelham, but they don't have two days. They come there and they fish it once a year and they're done. Mm-hmm. And I bet, I, I think that's, that's going to be better for, you know, um, just for the fishing in general. I mean, you have, you have the guys that come out there and, and, and kayaks and, and crappy fish and you have your cat fishermen and stuff like that. But, um, not a whole bunch of people bass fishes. Yeah. To me, it's just like when people talk about the ways that we can help the sport out, I really don't think it is about making a hundred thousand acre reservoir. I think something, cause the state is, I'm trying to get a guy on the show guys, by the way, from the state, talk about this. Uh, they're putting in a new lake down in the panhandle area. It's like a thousand acres. And if you put, six or seven lakes at about 1500 acres, like you can really do something to help really rejuvenate people's love of the sport. You don't need a Lake Anna size thing. And it's crazy when you talk about that. And I look and I know like this one's on a Marine base, but you got, um, you got Smith Lake up there. You got, it's just like, there's so many of these little lakes down 95 that you can be fishing able, which we've talked about, you know, Ignazio on the show, Mooney, of course, which is, is that's a, that's a place and a half Mott's run. Like there's so many little lakes through here that you can fish. Yeah. Abel's where we had our, our classic and, you know, and, and then, you know, bringing that back up, you know, that's when we had that bad storm come in the weekend that we were supposed to have our, um, our two day classic. And you've got like 14 guys that want to fish or, or 16. I can't remember how many boat, boats we had. We, we can't take on that responsibility when there's 35 and 40 mile an hour winds. So we had to call it. We had to. It's going to be raining sideways and that 30 plus mile an hour wind. So we, and of course there were people who were pissed. I get it. I mean, I've been, I've been, you know, traveling before and they, they called a day or a fog delay. There's nothing you can do about that, but that's on the people's shoulder that run, run the tournament. So, and then that's why we said, okay, we're going to move it. We're, we're just going to fish Lake Abel um, one day, and that's going to be the that's that's going to be the classic, and that's just one that McCluskey ended up winning. I mean, that stuff. That's just about safety. You have to do what you have to do to keep people safe. Because either way, in that that situation, as the you know the guy running it, you're going to get yelled at one way or the other. So at that point, it's just safety. Right. Absolutely. And and this year, you know, we're. And some people are like, oh, I'm not, I don't like fishing in the rain. Okay, well, then don't show up. The Virginia team trail, if they're calling for rain, we're not going to cancel it. You know, everybody has $500 rain gear. Um, so go fishing. And if you don't want to go fishing, you want to stay dry, stay at home. And I'm not trying to be an ass when I say that. I'm just saying that that unless it's something to where, say we, we're, we're supposed to fish the Potomac. And calling for, you know, four footers on the Potomac. Then we would say, okay, guys, we're not going to fish today. We're going to fish on Sunday. Mm-hmm. You know, like you said, you've got to be safe. Yeah. I mean, you just, yeah, that's, that's a no brainer. You have to be safe. Uh, you got to keep your people safe because, you know, besides lawsuits, it's just like the life of, of the individual. You, you mentioned all these other organizations, like how many other electric boat is it just you and like one other? Is there a bunch of them? I want, there's probably just off the top of my head, at least four or five other clubs just in Holy the area shit, damn. from damn. Charlottesville. And then Melissa and her husband, Jason down near Dyson. Um, Joel runs one. Um, 
and I, I should have written down all the names of their clubs. Oh, you're I'm, fine. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm going to um, get Melissa on the show. That's going to be definitely something I want to do. Yeah. I mean, they, they run a, a big and see, they run bigger waters of bitty, bigger bodies of water. So they can have 30 boats, 40 boats, you know, a lot of the places that we fish, that would be a struggle. Mm-hmm. So, so, I mean, are you going to cap we, it until, off? If this grows and say next year, you know, everyone likes this and they give us our feedback. And that's what we ask for. We want the feedback. And, you know, next year we might say, all right, we're going to do six more tournaments again, but we're going to expand it out to these large bodies of water. And hopefully we'll get up to 20 or 25 boats. You know, or you just cap it and just keep it what it is. You know, you can go fish Pelham in these places, but guess what? These are, it's like the elite seventies, you know, how they do their thing. Like you, you have your amount and the worst finishers you get kicked out and then you rotate new people in and that's just how it is. Right. And Eric was telling me that, um, he heard that they're down in Georgia. This is like, those dudes are on crack down there. I mean, it's like, it's like bassmaster almost really yeah they and they're trying to do one to where they take the, like their um their top five teams or whatever top three teams top five teams and put all of these you know electric only clubs and find one place and have like a national championship how cool would that be that'd be really cool and i'm I- talking you know they're, they're they're talking about giving away like a uh, two motors or giving away, you know, trolling motors and giving away, um, I, I'm, it could be like a $25,000, you know, purse. It, it's just, to me, it's just so interesting and unique when you have all these smaller reservoirs, like there's this, the scene here. And again, it makes sense because when I went down to ICAST, Torquedo talked about like Georgia and Virginia, Maryland area, they have the most electric motor lakes on you know the east coast or a good portion of them i mean hell we even talk about like liberty reservoir lock raven up more at my neck of the woods there's just, there's just so many opportunities out there to explore and to compete absolutely you know I so would, i would love to be able to talk to um what's the one late uh um uh, laguna on on base yes yes in the marine base yeah I would love to be able to have a tournament there, but I know that's going to be like, oh my God, there's, you know, that would, that would be tough. But, um, and then, you know, another thing that we come into, like, like for Fountainhead, Eric and I want to have one at Fountainhead, but you got to get insurance and they take 15% of your purse. <laughs> huh. So, you know, I mean, what do, you, what do you do then, right? You know, it's interesting because one argument I have is that they shouldn't do that. But on the flip side, I know they're never going to outlaw bass tournaments because they would lose a lot of revenue from the Fountainhead Club Series. So it's a weird like they probably depend on that money now because I mean, I, I don't know. You probably know this more than I do. Is the reason they have a outboard limit on that thing is because of the row teams? Is that basically why? That's that would that would be my number one guess. Yes. Yeah. I don't know. I just it's so funny when I'm I've been covering this Pennsylvania stuff and they've outlawed tournaments on um, Raystown and now Marsh. So there are two lakes you can't fish tournaments on. And I think maybe that's what you got to do is pay the lake to say, listen, we're gonna we'll pay you, but if you shut it off to tournament fishing, we're just gonna pull funding. Like maybe that's the right. mutually assured destruction thing you got to do. And that's like Lake Manassas. Oh yeah, dude. I grew up fishing like Lake Manassas, you know, back when I was a teenager. And then they put in these, you know, freaking three golf courses. It's not about the golf courses. It's about the money. Mm-hmm. It, and if somebody, you know, at Prince William would think about it and say, okay, you know, but they, they don't understand how much money there is in fishing. And is it culture? If they would, at the dam, if they would make a make a ramp and charge someone say five hundred dollars for for a pass to fish, that would keep just the weekend angler out of there. But someone like me and you and all the other guys that we fish with, I would pay five hundred dollars a year to be able to fish Lake Manassas. Is, is it the culture? Is that what it is? Like these people just don't understand the culture of fishing. They look down on it. You think? 
Absolutely. And and they blame it on they blame it on saying Robert Trent Jones golf course. They don't want to have someone that's paying two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year to go hit a little white ball around. They don't want to see someone fishing. It's it's electric gold yeah. anyway. We're not making noise. You know, we're not out there, you know, jet skiing. So it, it just it doesn't make any sense. It it, it doesn't. I mean it and I really wish somebody would tell me because I'm so confused about the laws for motor restriction because Phil Pot, which I just figured out and learned about, is basically the same size as the res. But if you want to put a 300 on your boat and do circles, go for it. The res, nope, can't do it. Like it's right. so con- convoluted and stupid. What <laughs> there? There's no logic to any of it. And I wish someone would explain it to me. But I don't think there is. It's just power and basically, yep, we decide we're going to do this for this lake because. Fuck you, we can't. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. That's what it boils down to because they know they can. But they, they just have no idea the money that they could actually mm-hmm. make. And Prince William would get all of it. You know what I'm saying? All they would need is a little shack, maybe throw a few baits in there and have a good place to park. And the guys that that really know what lives in there and the, the, the guys that I would – called not the weekend angler like i said would pay that much money to prince william to be able to fish there but i don't think that they realize they're like oh they're just a bunch of rednecks they wouldn't pay that much money dude it's a 10 billion dollar a year industry is fishing i mean look at um you know the baltimore lakes i mean i do not like the way they're run but hell i mean you spend a small fortune and you're allowed to be on there for those places so, how did Lake Manassas fish? Honestly, like, what was it like? The, you know, I'm not going to say any names. Um, I, I've I've fished there. It's probably been five or six years. People still fish there, and when you do go there and you give it a shot and you try and you go by and see if the, um, and I'm sure I'm probably going to hear some shit about saying this, but um see if the guys parked at the dam that takes the police boat out and stuff the the third time i got stopped they're like look dude we're gonna give you a trespassing ticket and you know we're gonna take your motor off you're gonna we're gonna do this that and the other and string you up but um i've heard one dude out there he had probably he's been probably ticketed 25 times and I think maybe one or one or two judges charged him like a hundred dollar trespassing ticket. That's all he got. So it's almost kind of worth it, you know. But there's giant crappie in there, like three pound crappie, four pound crappie. There's giant walleye in there, and if you went there just to bass fish, I I would say it's the best lake. You know, small lake. That's something that size in Virginia. I am blown away. Like the police will buy a boat to put it on that damn lake. Like all the resources they're throwing at. I covered an article back last summer where it was broken that like they spend close to $90,000 a year to keep people off that place. How, that is the dumbest pissing of money I've ever heard of. Like you could put that into a boat ramp and a dock. But no, you're going to just spend that on just keeping people off. That is so stupid. And normally, normally the cop that, and don't, I'm not saying anything. I love military cops, first responders. Don't get me, don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying it to be derogatory towards them, but 99 times out of a hundred, if you drive past and go over where the dam is, the cop is sitting in his truck, watching his phone. And the only time he puts the boat in the water is if he gets a call and someone says, Hey, there's somebody out here. Mm-hmm. Now that back in, you know, back, you know, three, four, five years ago, they would go out there and they would drive around three or four times and then they would put the boat on the trailer and they would leave. But now I pretty much, I would say at least five days a week, there's a cop in that truck just waiting on the phone call. That's, that's, that's it. And, and he, look how much money they're paying him. Yeah, it, it's it's stupid. And again, it's not the cops' fault. Someone's going to pay him to do the job. I'm just saying like, he shouldn't be doing that in general. Like whoever's paying his bills. It, again, it's just 
it is such a disconnect. And it's, I really think it's this money that comes out. I call, I call Northern Virginia now California 2.0. You know, if you look at Ashburn and Fairfax, it's just no one is from here. Everyone has been a transplant and they bring that culture with them. Yep. Like you wouldn't have this in Alabama or the Carolinas. You just no wouldn't. Way. I mean, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, Georgia, you know, all that. They're all for it. Who cares yeah. if it's on a golf course? Someone is probably going to go up and say, have you caught any? You know, mm-hmm. I mean, that's just how it is down there. And that's another problem that, you know, Eric and I, you know, we're kind of like, hit a brick wall because we only have so many bodies of water to choose from. Yeah. You know, my, my daughter lives in North Carolina. You can leave her house and drive 30 minutes or 40 minutes in any direction and hit a body of water. We're, we don't, we don't have that good around here. We really don't. And it is frustrating. And I really hope, I think we're going to, I think, yeah, we're going to see some lake building again, especially because there's so many little places that they need to. I, you got Beaver Dam up in Leesburg that they shut off to the public again. That's interesting to see what happened there. But that's a story for another episode. Um, and that's a great place to fish. That's got giant bass in it. Oh, it's it's fantastic, especially if you guys don't know about Beaver Dam. So they closed it down for some dam repair. But when they lowered the level for like a thousand years, they all the brush grew right back up and then they reflooded it. So there's a ton of cover in that place right now. Yep. Um, but I don't know. They're turning, what are they doing? Like, I, I think it's, they're turning the park into some freaking observatory. Some, they shut down the boat ramp they had and now they're making a new boat ramp, but it's just, it's a freaking nightmare. It absolutely It'll is. It'll be for like bird watchers or something. I exactly. Mean, really. it, and that's the thing with Sleeters Lake. So I grew up on Sleeters and before Sleeters got completely bought out by uh, development. There was this one boat ramp, Mrs. Barker, up right next to um, on seven, and then they completely built around the whole lake. Uh, she passed away. That thing got shut down, and so they put a ramp. Would they put a ramp in? No. We're gonna put in a kayak launch thing, and we won't put in a boat ramp because we think a boat ramp will incentivize people to use the lake too much. Well, guess what? If you want to drop a kayak in it's a pain in the ass to drop a kayak in because you don't have a place to do it and so who's making these decisions that make no sense if you wanted to put a kayak in put a boat ramp and they'll still use the damn thing absolutely it's they spent all that money for a park that's worthless but yeah it's it's 100 percent correct i agree with you i don't know i just i get it's just yeah. Anyway, I could rant about that the whole time. It just none of these homeowners make sense. None of these HOAs make sense with some of the decisions they make. But I guess this, this is the sad part. And and I'm going to also drop this out here because we do have time. Um, the Department of Wildlife Resources is changing their freshwater laws. Uh, you have until February 24th to go to their website. And I'll put an episode. I'll put a link in the episode description. You can comment on what you'd like to see changed in the laws. Um, from what they told me. There's not a lot of interest from anglers. There haven't been a lot of written comments, but it's been a lot of comments from residents commenting right. what they want to see. So if you're an angler, please, if you're listening to this, please stop bitching and go comment what you'd want to see because Karen, she's commenting on what she wants to see. And if oh, they all comment- Every day. Yeah. Yep, every day. And they'll change the laws. That will happen. And it's because we didn't say what we wanted to see. Um, and that's what's so frustrating is I just feel like you should- and this is a little controversial. If you don't have skin in the game, you shouldn't be voting. I, I don't know. Like, it's such a weird thing to see. Like, maybe a, a resident that doesn't fish getting to change laws to affect what I enjoy. Right. But I don't know, dude. It's a it's a brave new world. It really is. Uh, on that pessimistic note, one more time for everyone that's listening at home. If they want to join your tournament series, where can they find you? So go to. Uh Go on Facebook to Virginia Team Trail. Um, Just send a request and either Eric or myself will approve it. Um, You can go there and and we have we have the uh, the six tournaments uh, posted um, and we'll have the dates and times next weekend because all the other guys that have that we're waiting on their schedule to come out. um, We're going to basically do it around them. Um, Okay. So, 
our, fir our first tournament I know is going to be in March, and that's going to be at the Occoquan River. But we just don't know exactly. It's probably going to be towards the end of March, but we're going to wait and make sure that one of the other clubs isn't, you know, thinking the same thing we're thinking and go there first. But if they do, we'll either go the week before them or the week after them. Ross, thank you so much for coming on tonight. I, I really appreciate it. Guys, again, as always, link in the episode description to everything that I talked about today. Also, if you don't mind, go check us out on Patreon. We are getting close. We're only 24 members away from hitting our first Patreon goal. And then overall, we're hoping to create a nonprofit to help supp supplementally stock some of these fisheries. I, I got permission from the higher up so I can do that. So that's our overall goal in a couple of years. And we're getting closer and closer each day. Like, subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing in DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will.